Hello, in this video I'll teach you how you can get a good quality bake when you are baking from a high polygon cylinder onto a low polygon game asset cylinder. So I got a question with this image attached to it about how you can avoid these kinds of problems. And this is caused when you try to bake a, a, very, a cylinder with many sides onto a cylinder with fewer sides. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here is my high polygon cylinder and here is my low polygon cylinder. It has 10 sides. Alright, and here it has a basic UV W layout. So this is what I will be using. So first of all, I will go ahead and bake with the regular result without any changes. The most important thing you can do is to have a good cage. So when I go ahead and apply projection and pick the high polygon, Instead of using the push here, which can create distortion, I'm going to go ahead and do the cage myself. I'll go in the top viewport and move it out here. Then I'll go into the front viewport and scale it vertically. Alright. And I'll go ahead and bake it. Projection having enabled, don't forget to go in here and select a global super sample, a camera sleeve, quality one, anti-aliasing, you can choose a filter here, something like Cat Mularam. And then I'll go ahead and add a normal map. And I'll just go ahead and call this test cylinder test one. And I'll get back to you once I have finished rendering it out. And I'll go ahead and give it a size of 512. Alright, so I've taken the normal map that we just rendered, cylinder test 1, and I went ahead and applied it to a hardware map. And here is the result right here. And you can see already it looks a lot better because I did the cage myself. We don't get this kind of effect here. Slightly, a little bit. But we do have a little bit of distortion here at the bottom. We have this kind of arching effect. So one simple way to remove that is I'll go ahead and select my low poly. And I'll go ahead and apply Turbo Smooth and I'll go ahead and use the Smoothing Groups option. Because in this kind of situation with this kind of low polygon we have a sharp angle here so we, it is a good idea to have a different smoothing group at the top and on the sides. So I'll go ahead and increase that, give it two iterations go ahead and apply a projection modifier once again but before I do that it may be a good idea to scale it outwards a little bit alright projection pick the high poly set the cage myself and vertically alright and I'll get back to you once it's finished baking Alright, so now I have two materials, one with the cylinder test 1 and one with cylinder test 2, two different normal maps, and we can see the results. And you can see the result on the right is slightly better because we don't have this arcing at the bottom. And let me go ahead and show you a closer look. Here we have, as you can see, this kind of arc happening here. And with this one, it's relatively straight. So we do have a better result with this one right here because we're using this cylinder right here because it has more curvature to actually capture the normal map details and that carries over into the low poly as well. Alright and that is the easy way to get a better result when you're baking a cylinder. Alright now I'd like to go ahead and show you another example and another important technique that you can use that I have discovered for myself that I'd like to share with you. So here I have this kind of high polygon cylinder now in order to get a better result with this, it is a good idea to go ahead and actually add two more loops through here that will come out here and help you to define the geometry better. So we are increasing the, the triangle count a little bit. Now here, there is just one smoothing group because even though there's an angle, it's not a very sharp angle, so we can just have one smoothing group here. Alright, so here is my low poly. Now I want to go ahead and apply the same technique but if I do that, 
the smoothing group here, the geometry here becomes too smooth. So what I will do is I will temporarily give this a separate smoothing group temporarily just so that it maintains that edge and then I'll go back and remove that smoothing group so I'll just just go ahead and give this one so there we go and one other thing you can do is let me go ahead and switch to edge turn on ignore back facing so that I don't get the edges on the other side and what I will do is select these edges and remove them not this one r right here so basically I'm going to remove the edges on the top but not the ones at the bottom so you can see the difference for yourself so I'll just go in here and remove that and I'll go ahead and speed this up so you don't have to I should just go ahead and skip this and I'll get back to you once I re remove the edges all around alright so I have gone and removed these edges not all of them just the ones that are forming over here so we can see so basically this is the base topology when I apply a turbo smooth it goes and adds a bunch of edges inside of here so you can see that happening but now I will go and I have gone and removed those edges but I have not removed them at the bottom so you can see the difference for yourself so now I'll go ahead and use this as my low poly I'll go ahead and move it to the center go ahead and scale the vertices out a little bit so that it more closely matches the high poly alright about right there now I'll go ahead and use projection pick the high poly go ahead in the top viewport and scale out the cage it's a little bit too much alright go in the front viewport and scale it up a little bit make sure that it is on top of it there we go All right, and I'll go ahead and bake this and I'll get back to you once I'm done alright and here is my bake right here and I want to show the difference between the top and the bottom so I'll go ahead and take my object that I used to bake and we can see what is happening so here's the topology on the top and here it is for the bottom so watch what's happening here you can see on the top I have a nice smooth circular shape here that's because I have gone and removed those edges here whereas on the bottom notice how it's very angular here it may not be very noticeable from far away but you can definitely see that there are angles here and that's because we have not removed the edges on the bottom so we have kind of a an angular shape on the outside here whereas on the top it's smooth all the way around and if we take a look at the normal map you can see what's happening here the topology on the bottom is dependent on the I mean the normal map result on the bottom is dependent on the topology so it's only smooth if the topology itself is smooth so basically it only works if I go ahead and turn on smoothing groups and turn on turbo smooth you can see that now it becomes round but this is too much topology for us to use at the moment so we don't want this we want to have a nice smooth result like here so you can see the difference between the top and the bottom and as you can see if you use this method if you have your if you take your low polygon geometry and turbo smooth it and remove these edges right here you will get a much better result here as opposed to this angular result on the bottom so here is the result you should be aiming for thank you for watching and take care